I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my review of Batman Ninja. I give the movie a D plus. Gorilla Grodd has created a time machine and has housed it in Arkham Asylum. Batman and Catwoman attempt to defeat Grodd's plan. There's an accident and Grodd, Batman, Catwoman, as long as several villains and heroes wind up being transported to ancient Japan. Now, Batman actually arrives two years after everyone else, so everyone else has accustomed themselves to the Japanese culture of that era, and Batman must defeat Grodd, as well as the other villains, get everyone back to present-day Gotham while relying not on his usual tech, but all of the assets and skills and items available in ancient Japan time. I'm not really an anime fan. I mean, I like certain animes, and then there are certain anime-inspired items that I like. But as overall whole for action anime, I'm not really a big fan. Uh, I wound up watching the DVD extras first instead of the movie first because of some uh, unique circumstances. And in the extras, I learned that one of the people that worked on Batman Ninja also worked on Afro Samurai, which I enjoyed. So I figured, hey, okay, maybe this movie might not be so bad. Or was I wrong? Uh, this movie's terrible. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. There's very little I can praise about this movie. It's a unique film in which it looks great, but it's terrible to watch. By that I mean, if you pause the movie at just about any point, you can admire the character designs and setting. There's a lot of imagination. There's a lot of detail. It looks fantastic. But when the animation is going and the story is going and the action is going and what passes for a plot is going, it's just terrible. It's a mess. It's ridiculous. It barely makes any sense. Uh, one of the best parts of the movie is the climax. There is a duel between Joker and Batman, and that's when the action focuses on just those two characters, their interaction, and their fight, and it looks fantastic. Uh, another great part is the credit sequence. During the credits, uh, there are pictures presented sort of like a comic book panels, and it tells the uh, aftermath of what happens, and that's a very great sequence because you can actually uh, enjoy the story, and there's a lot more focus on story than all the zaniness and absurdity that happens in the movie. But this highlights how awful the movie is. I mean, think about it. The best parts of the movie is when you pause it or when you watch the stills from the credits. In other words, the best part of your animated movie is when the movie's not animating. Because this is a rental review, I can't go into too much details because then I will lead to spoilers, but I can highlight some of the things that are wrong about this movie. Now, as I said, I watched the DVD extras, and during the discussion, they mentioned how uh, they had to find ways to balance Eastern and Western style, including uh, body movements and uh, facial expressions and mouthing so that uh, it makes uh, transitions and translation much easier, and that's fine. Uh, and I'm sure that there's different styles of storytelling in, in Eastern culture than Western culture. But still, I believe that no matter where you are, there are certain rules to uh, telling a good story. And there are certainly certain rules about uh, characters that you establish for over several decades. And this movie just either ignores them or breaks them. Uh, for instance, there is a scene in which Two-Face is aligned with a particular character, and then he flips his coin and catches it, and he turns bad. Uh, we're to presume, assume that the coin went on the bad side. But the thing is, we don't see the coin. He flips the coin, catches it, and he's like, okay, I'm bad now. And it's like, all right, even if you don't show the audience the coin, I mean, even if uh, I'm sure coins are very different uh, in ancient Japan than they are of modern America, but still, 
it's two different sides. You got to show the other side, or you got to at least show the character looking at the coin. He doesn't flip, catch it, and then decides to be bad. That's not how Two Face works. He flips the coin, catches it, sees the coin, and then makes a decision based on how that coin goes. You know, he doesn't just catch it. So that, that's a break of the rule right there. Uh, another part is uh, Robin has this little uh, ch uh, chimp friend, and now the chimp doesn't speak a uh, human language, but Robin and the chimp can understand each other. I'm like, okay, fine. There's, you know, that happens a lot in cartoons and anime and things like that, so fine. Uh, and then during the epic battle, Robin's playing a flute, and he's blowing into the flute while the monkey does the uh, uh, holes, like, Okay, fine, again, you know, a little animal psychic. But then, from out of nowhere, this little female chip appears. And she helps play the flute. And I'm thinking, who is this character? There is no explanation to this character. In fact, one of the characters says, who's that? And no one answered. She just comes out in the middle of the third act, helps play the flute, then leaves the third act, and then, oh, during the uh, resolution period, you know, after the climax and everything, she's back again for a few moments. It's like she has about less than 15 seconds of actual screen time, and yet she's essential uh, to the climax or the, or the third act. It's like, no, you just can't introduce a character out of nowhere. Who is this character? Or is this something that happens in Japan? I mean, is she some character that just pops up? Uh, you know, is the chimp and this chimp girl a Susie to a Japanese uh, Batman over there? You know, who is this character? So there's a period when Bruce Wayne has to walk around in the city uh, so we can, you know, strategize as well as get accustomed to the area. And, of course, he just can't walk around as Batman too all the time. So he wears a traditional Japanese outfit of the time. But... His head is shaved, the top of his head is shaved, and there's a Batman logo on the top of his head. You can't not notice that logo. He's got a bald head with a Batman logo. He's trying to be incognito. That's not the way you can be incognito. Okay, that just does not make any sense whatsoever. He's a stranger to that city, and everyone's going to notice this tall, white stranger in the middle of Japan, and they're definitely going to notice a big ball scout with a Batman logo painted on it. And even if he somehow got away with that in Japan, what happens when it goes back to present-day Gotham? I mean, is he going to just hide in Wayne Manor until his hair grows back? Is he going to wear sort of a hat every time he goes out in public? Is he just going to throw some crazy costume party every week? It just doesn't make any sense for Bruce Wayne to have a Batman logo on his freaking head. Like I said, simple storytelling rules and character rules and things like that that should be uh, consistent throughout the brand and just storytelling itself. Batman Ninja ignores so many rules like that and other rules like pacing and human endurance and character motivations and heat transference and geography and gravity. Ugh. But the biggest offense of this movie is the over-escalation of events and items and technology. It just gets bigger and crazier. Now, I understand that is sort of part of the anime style, especially when it comes to action. But still, it's just absurd. You know how when kids are playing and they keep trying to one-up each other because neither of them wants to admit defeat? I block your attack with my shield of virtue, but I have a predator gun and I can blast through your shield. But I have Kylo Ren on my team. He stops your lasers with the force. Well, I have Eleven on my team and her powers come from the upside down dimension and are immune to the force. Then I shall summon the Cloverfield monster who comes from a dimension more dangerous than the upside down. Then I'll summon Voltron he can defeat any giant monster from any planet. Then I'll summon Unicron, who is a giant planet. Then I'll summon Galactus, who devours planets. Then I'll summon Woken Matt Hardy. He already beat the Eater of Worlds. He can beat Galactus too. 
Yes! Craziness like that happens from practically beginning to end of this movie, and it just gets so stupid by the end. I'm like, I thought my brain was going to melt. I could have waited for the movie over so I could stop watching this film. And then I thought to myself, well, okay, wait a minute. Maybe it really is for kids. There's not a uh, bad language, not, not a lot of it. Uh, despite all the sores and explosions, there's no deaths. And even though there are sores and violence, uh, there's no blood except for a little bit of blood on the Joker to make his you know, smile a little more sinister. But other than that, you know, it's not anything really disturbing. So I thought, okay, well, maybe this really is for kids, for little children. But just because it's for kids doesn't mean it needs to be so stupid. Okay, uh, like the Lego Batman movie. You know, that's for kids, and it has a lot of crazy characters, and it has a lot of zaniness, and it uses just about all the Batman lore it could possibly uh, contain. And yes, it's pretty much a glorified commercial for Warner Brothers and DC Comics and the Lego brand, but still, the movie has heart and character and pacing and physics that belong into that realm that it that maintains. Uh, and there's progression, and, you know, there's downtimes and uptimes, and you can follow what happens. It's brilliant. Where Batman Ninja is just a mess. It, it's a mess. Earlier this year, I did a triple movie review of three animated Batman movies, and all three of those films were better than Batman Ninja, including the Scooby-Doo movie, which actually features a talking chimp. In 2016, Batman the K Killing Joke was released. And it has some structure issues, but still, overall, it's a much better movie than Batman Ninja. The Joel Schumacher films are terrible, and both of them are much better than Batman Ninja. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's a cultural thing, you know, maybe uh, Batman Ninja will do fantastic in the Japanese market, in the action anime market, or the children's market, or whatever market they're trying to get this movie towards. Maybe it would be fantastic, from, but from where I sit, Batman Ninja is the second worst Batman project I have ever had a witness, and I've seen many, 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 many versions of Batman. Thank goodness I saw those DVD uh, extras first so I can uh, be a little uh, forgiving about some of the other things that annoy me about the film uh, because my grade would be much worse if uh, I had not seen those DVD extras. So with that in mind, I give Batman Ninja a grade of D+. Plus, and I hope I never have to sit through this thing again. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to leave whatever comments or feedback you'd like to place in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hero Knight. Thanks for watching, and remember, find inspiration everywhere. Oh, the worst Batman project is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. That movie is all, all kinds of awful.